So hello, everybody. My name is Kara LaPointe, and I'm here from Johns Hopkins University, where I am the co-director for a new institute we call the Institute for Assured Autonomy. So this is a joint effort between the Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Lab, where I work, and the Whiting School of Engineering, which is on the campus side of Johns Hopkins. So we really focus on how you make sure that everything that's AI-enabled and autonomous across society is safe, secure, reliable, ethical, and trustworthy as these technologies are getting integrated into every part of our lives. So this is really a collaborative effort between our colleagues up at the university side who do more of the fundamental research, and then where I work where we do more of the applied research. So we come together as a team to figure out what are the, the basic uh, methodologies and tools that we need to develop, and then how do we actually implement those to make impact across society. And this is a challenge that is, is way beyond any one organization. So we partner really closely with industry and government and other academy, academia and other nonprofits to do this, because this is really something that's going to take the whole community, which is why I'm super excited to be here today with this community and this Grok Day community, especially to really explore kind of the hardware pieces of the assurance problem. So let's dive into our talk for the day. So why do we care about these things? Well, I don't need to tell most of you, AI is everywhere, right? And AI and autonomy, there's a global explosion going on. The potential benefits of AI across sectors are enormous. Here are some just ripped from the headlines in terms of different ways that people are looking at AI and autonomy to help people in the health space, smart city space, reducing crashes with different AI-enabled technologies, even, you know, completely changing the supply chain system, making it more efficient. So there's this ongoing explosion. There's so much promise in this technology. But there's a flip side, right? There are challenges. Sometimes things can go wrong. And when they go wrong, they can go horribly, horribly wrong. So I actually spend most of my days and with my team, we spend thinking about what could go wrong with AI? What could go wrong with autonomy? And how do we start to prevent these things? And how do we, or mitigate them? Right? So we spend a lot of time thinking about this. And this is actually why Johns Hopkins created this new institute, this Institute for Assured Autonomy. And it's really about how do we bring together industry and government and academia so that collectively we can solve the problem of ensuring that all things that are AI-enabled are safe, secure, ethical, and that can be trusted and trustworthy as we integrate them into all sectors of society. And so this is not just something about technology, right? We take a really holistic approach to the challenges of assurance in AI. It is about the technology and making sure that as we build AI into systems, whether we're building into cyber physical systems, like you see an unmanned aerial vehicle here, or whether we're talking about decision support systems and decision making algorithms that operate more in the cyber domain, you know, making sure that we know how these things are safe and reliable how do we do test and evaluation on these systems so that we understand what are those safe operating envelopes? When are these algorithms going to work properly? And when are they not going to work? You know, what are contexts outside of where they're really structured to, to function? Also, how do we make sure these systems are safe? Or sorry, beyond safe, how do we make sure that these systems are secure and they're robust against attack? Right? So these are some of the technological things that we address every day. But beyond just the technology, we think a lot about the ecosystem that technology is going to operate in. What is that human ecosystem? Right? We often talk that, that we're operating at the intersection between technology and humanity. What is that socioeconomic ecosystem, that socio-technical ecosystem? Because it's important to understand context. What context AI-enabled systems are going to be used in really determines huge parts of the challenges that we have in terms of trustworthiness, right? And then also ethics and governance. These are really important pieces. What happens so often is that technology develops, gets implemented, things can go wrong, and then we create the governance regimes, whether it's policy, laws, and we really start to understand the ethical frameworks that we need to be using with these technologies, and then we implement them. But the fact is, is that technology moves so fast today. And as we live in this digital world where AI systems can have global impact very quickly, we don't have that luxury of letting technology develop and then developing governance systems, right? So we have to be doing all of these things in concert. 
So we really think about this issue of assurance of AI and assurance of autonomy in a very holistic way of how do we understand the strategic feedback loops from all of these areas. So this is what we call assured autonomy, right? It's all of these different things. You heard me use a lot of different words, safe, secure, reliable, trustworthy, predictable, resilient, all of these things combined is really how we look at assured autonomy. So what are the unsolved challenges? We spend a lot of time thinking, as I said, what could go wrong? What are these unsolved challenges? And how do we start to overcome these challenges? So how do you ensure autonomous systems operate safely in an unconstrained world? Right? You know, when you take an autonomous system out of the lab or out of a, an isolated field, when you put it alongside other technologies, alongside people, how do I know? How do I know what the boundaries of safe operation are? You know, one of the challenges of AI is whatever context it is trained on, the minute you put it into the real world, you are changing that context. So how do you have an approach, kind of a life cycle approach for the technology to make sure that it's safe? not just at the moment of deployment, but throughout the life cycle of the technology. How do we create better design tools to build reliable autonomous systems and AI-enabled systems? So it really, you have to have a life cycle approach here. We need the tools, what we call kind of the tools and methodologies of assurance when you're initially designing systems and you know, even developing requirements and designing systems and ultimately developing and implementing and operating them. But so what are those tools? This is an example of a tool we have folks working on that looks at, okay, if I'm upgrading the software from one iteration to the next, is there some kind of graphical interface that I can use to understand quickly as I'm fixing certain you know, challenges with one iteration of the software, when I create the next iteration, am I introducing new vulnerabilities or new challenges in that software? If accidents happen, how do we know what went wrong? This is huge, and when we think about the commercial adoption, right, or military adoption or other forms of adoption of these technologies, if something goes wrong, we want to know what went wrong so that we can prevent it and fix it. How do you prevent sister systems from learning bad behaviors? As we know, AI is a reflection of the data that it's trained on, right? So how do we ensure that the data AI-enabled systems are being trained on are teaching the right behaviors. So what are the other types of reinforcement learning and other types of modalities and methodologies we can use to make sure that we're driving the right behaviors into these systems? Whether they're cyber physical systems, like you see a car here, or whether they're more of these decision-making systems. How do you manage autonomous systems in a crowded, dynamic ecosystem? We think a lot about vehicles, right? Or you can also think about smart city constructs. But as you have autonomous and AI-enabled systems operating in close proximity with people, I mean, there are some <laughs> terrifying examples here. I mean, you look at an unmanned aerial system way too close to a passenger. How do you start to manage that from the, in the operations phase of the life cycle of autonomous systems? What are those techniques? What are those technologies? What are those governance frameworks you need to make sure that we can do this in a safe way? How do you monitor autonomous systems to ensure that they're operating as intended? You, know, you can't possibly design all risk out of an AI-enabled system. So you have to have some way during operational phases to understand what's happening and to monitor and see, okay, am I getting a good outcome? Do I have the right outcomes that I want? Or is performance going in a way that actually is not desirable or potentially even dangerous? So we have a number of research teams that look at how do you start to implement different monitoring systems to look at that, whether you're talking about critical infrastructure like energy infrastructure or monitoring kind of traffic with autonomous systems in an overall traffic scheme in a city. How do we proactively create effective policy and governance? As I said before, if you wait to be reactive once a technology is created, you're not gonna end up with an optimal outcome. And we've seen in so many instances where AI has been developed and deployed and there's negative consequences and that refresh rate is so quick. How do we make sure that we're being proactive about this? So as the technology develops, so does our understanding of what are those mechanisms that we need to put into place to put the appropriate guardrails on technology. One, to allow technology to thrive, but number two, to then put the appropriate guardrails to make sure we're minimizing the unintended consequences or potential negative effects. 
how could this technology be attacked? There's a lot of different ways, and that's, you know, I think one of the really exciting things to talk to this community, kind of more of the hardware community, is what are the ways that we can design in robustness and uh, resilience and security by design, right? And technology can be attacked in different ways. It can be attacked as, you know, inputs, right? Data inputs and sensor inputs. Are you, are you attacking those sensor inputs? Or are you attacking the system at the fundamental levels of the system? So this is really important to understand these different modalities and how we start to protect against them. Do all autonomous systems need to be explainable? This is a really important one. As we take advantage of learning-based AI, as we take advantage of, of having data and having these systems be able to make correlations, even start to make predictions in ways beyond what a human-built model could do, is it important that they're explainable? Well, I have an example here of some research that's done by Anna Buczek and Mark Dredzdy at, at Johns Hopkins, where they have actually built a system using an RNN that starts to predict irregular leadership changes around the world when governments are going to transition not through their normal processes. And it's been really, really effective at doing so. But how do you explain what's going on? So they've actually done some research to say, how do you actually build models in parallel? So you're not changing your fundamental AI algorithm at the heart of the system, but you're creating an understanding by building parallel models in different ways to understand what's going on. Now, for you know, irregular leadership changes around the world, that's probably really important. If I'm opening, you know, using facial recognition to get into my iPhone, maybe it's less important that it's explainable. If I have, say, smart warehouse vehicles that I have here, do I need them to be explainable? Maybe, maybe not. But it's really important to understand the ways that we can make these algorithms explainable. We have another team looking at this from a completely different way. So we have Marin Kobolerov, who is working on this with Aurora Schmidt from our team. And instead of making things explainable by not changing the model at all, they're actually looking at a hybrid model where they take physics-based models and then they take learning-based models and they use the combination of the two and apply formal methods for verification so that they can overall have a system that's far more explainable. Because you know, some of the applications they're looking at, explainability is critical. They're looking at robotic-assisted surgery. They're looking at vehicles. So these are instances where you know, there are safety of life issues, where explainability is really important. So this is one example of you know, all of these different questions that we're asking about assurance, and how do we start to develop these tools and methodologies. So overall, we have this very holistic framework of assured autonomy, and I've talked about these, these different pieces, but making sure these systems are safe and reliable, so an autonomous system operating is safe and reliable. It's also secure and resilient to attack. And then when I take a number of these systems and try to put them into to human ecosystems, that I can do so pre predictably and, and seamlessly integrate them in, and ultimately making sure these systems are beneficial and have an ethical impact on society. So this is really this holistic framework of assured autonomy that we're building. And it's about the tools, building the tools and the methodologies. So here are just some examples of the types of different things that we're looking at. And one of the, the conversations I'm really excited to have with this community is what are the other tools we're not thinking about, especially from the hardware domain? What are things that we should be building into kind of this robustness and assurance by design from the hardware domain? So, and really, this is something we're going to have to do together. No one institution, no one sector is going to be able to do this alone. So really excited to be here talking to this community and looking forward to the panel discussion. Well, thank you so much for checking out my talk today. If you'd like to learn more and get in contact, you can find us online at iaa.jhu.edu. There's information about our different research projects we're working on. There's contact information. We would love to get involved, and we really look forward to engaging with you all in conversation again at future events.